Hi, welcome. Thanks for tuning in today and welcome to the today's session. And today we're going to talk about, as I said last time, whom to trust and where to invest. These are the experiences I had gone through on each and area of investing. And uh, what are the advices I received on a wrong time? And then well, it was that advices was helped enough for me to stay in my course. I was, it's just those one of those vague advices which I received and I paid for it. So let's try to understand. Uh, by end of this video, I want you to understand uh, it's you who need to educate yourself. And, uh, and at each and every step what you take eventually will help you to build your own fortune. Uh, when I say fortune, you know, it, it depends on person to person and how you want to see yourself financially stable and successful. So wherever you want to see yourself, it's up to you and up to you purely your imagination. But then everything starts with a discipline. And that's what we're trying to understand in this series of um, videos. So let's dive into it. And I just wanted to start with where, as I said in a, from the last videos, um, the idea of having a backup of income I came from when I lost my first job and that's where I thought I need to have some backup and then eventually uh, slowly in a hotel industry I did get an opportunity to progress myself in my career I got an opportunity to you know go abroad and work and make some money but then again you know there are a lot of things there are a lot of mistakes I made uh, eventually costed me but you know as I speak you know uh, it's a when you fail on something, it's a way better you learn to uh, grow further. And that's the only thing. You, just because you, you you fail in certain topic or certain business, it doesn't mean that you are a failure in that particular business. Maybe you're not good enough in that trade. So uh, you should not stop doing a business, but then you can explore what what is your trade and look into those aspects is more important than like then you know saying that okay uh, you know this business didn't work and then and then considering yourself not doing a business is pretty much foolishness uh, but you know you can accept that the failure of that particular trade didn't work out because probably there are many others who can do better than yourself but then when you step back and think that okay you know this is my trade and so learning from any mistakes is something that you need to learn and move forward. So learning from any mistake is a blessing. Uh, you should not consider that as a failure, but then, you know, what lessons you can take and then take that level to the next, uh, you know, in your, whichever the area you're working is most important thing. So now let's dive into the things we're gonna discuss. This is, as I had mentioned, it is to connect where to invest and whom to trust. And those are the investment uh, opportunities versus mistakes I made versus whom you should trust end of this video that's an idea for you to understand now let's talk about the savings and FDs and so back at those days now even today you know those are the not the good returns you always expect uh, pretty much uh, this is a regular savings account you normally take in and take all those accounts and which will be able to help you for a same month or two three months uh, for normal expenses but then if you happen to you know secure enough to have to put that in a fixed deposit which is ideal to um, to keep that a small investment for um, a period of one year it's not for the returns which you are going to look at it it's for going to have you know either you have a um, say uh, you can keep it as an emergency corpus fund or you can keep it as for you to invest in the future so probably you know thinking to buy a, a house, etc. That would help you. So at that point of time, I had about, you know, uh, 10 lakhs, but then I did two different uh, investments. And I said two different investments. So as I said, on a fixed deposit, if you don't stay a period of length of time, say one year, so at the end, the maturity value, they already give you based on whatever the, whatever the current rate of the interest, what you have. But then don't forget that you'll be paying the tax also out of the interest what you get. Now, so I was just to be sure that, you know, even if I break one, probably I will have another one to at least to give the 35,000 or rupees as an interest. So luckily I didn't break both of them. So I got about 2.8 interest 
um, which is about close to 75. So I'm not, as a second, I'm saying 75,000 divided by 12 months is pretty much is nothing much if you compare to the expenses you incur. But then idea is that you know you don't uh, you know uh, you have a good returns on that one of an investment for a bigger investment where I use that for real estate to buy it. So banks will give you advices and pretty much any banks can keep telling you okay this is a recurring deposit and this is a fixed deposit so if you have a savings account a little bit of further i'm sure you get a calls from the people so this is giving you best rates and depends on the you know the bank to bank they will always push you to do something so that they can get the commission so that's about it but nothing harm you know they're doing the do job and then you see where you want to see yourself and then keep yourself so if you can do that from savings whatever the basics like 10 percent 20 percent of uh you know the, uh, the uh, you know in uh, savings you might have you can put it in a fixed deposit for you to have a you know pretty much decent returns uh which is four or five percent pretty much you can say now well you know so basically there is no harm people were telling you so you take it based on whatever the things so now let's get back into the mutual funds now back in 2017 so we're talking about 2019 so back in 2007 i asked my branch where i had a bank account uh, to suggest from for them to suggest me a nice mutual funds so basically the one young guy who has no absolutely zero experience is asking another young guy who was also pretty much joined in the company and that bank who has absolutely no idea so one fool is asking another fool to give me a best suggestion for my future i mean how blind uh, you can be you know so but anyways based on what other knowledge he has he suggested okay these two funds are doing good pretty much we can take it so that one also there is one good advice he gave me which i didn't follow which i'll come back to you on that so that time there's a uh, you know you can you can just refer that particular fund sba tax canada sba contra I invested one lakh and pretty much you know uh, the nab net asset value of that particular uh, fund was about 60 rupees so i got about 2000 uh, units and contra it was about 1800 units i got for one lakh so imagine you know for one lakh my investment value was only for 83000 so both the funds i lost already in the first instant of you know investing about 17 thousand rupees yes so that's the uh, you know the charges hidden charges charges you know the commissions etc etc will go so you need to be aware of that one too but yeah you know what you know if, if someone is doing good right was giving you better than your fixed deposits or better than your savings account probably need to take some chances you know someone is working for their uh, commissions let them do that but then at least if you're not professional enough there's the best way to do it too now now in 2008 when we have a market crash uh well not crash i would say it went down uh obviously my mutual funds from 60 rupees went to 30 rupees so basically the next year i observed that uh, you know that my two lakhs became pretty much 70,000 rupees now i was you know very young i got panic i said you know it cannot be you know you know in less than a year and i was expecting to give at least 10 20 30 percent of returns you know that's the idea of having a uh, wild idea of having invested in the stocks and mutual funds that's an idea but then that's not true so basically i lost my money and well i didn't lost money i, I, I lost in terms of paper basically so I didn't have any emotions basically so what i did i waited 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 when till it gets back to that uh, uh, you know that 60 rupees range which took about three to four years then what i did i sold but you know and though the two lakhs for about four years pretty much gave me zero returns thank god i didn't sell it for loss I mean, at least i had that emotion that to keep it so that you know for understanding but then one good suggestion he gave me i said sir you know it's it's a nice fund but keep accumulating when it goes the you know the value is down i said come on man i already broke my hand and i already burned my hand uh, and then you are still asking me to invest on those one which i see you know it's always down see that is by knowing or knowing he gave me a good suggestion which i didn't follow basically if i would have bought it in dips now if i look back and if i increase that to 2000 units to 4000 units the returns would have been different as we speak 
but then whatever you do it it's gone there is nothing that i can think you know i could have kept it i could have key you know seen it i would have bought it nothing past is past there's nothing that i can do so basically mutual funds experience is zero for me and uh, so i was pretty much not interested uh kind of okay just to have this amount saving now i went to the stocks you know the stocks is again i started investing pretty much in 2008 till today so pretty much i i in and out i put out invested about 10 to 20 lakhs now thank god over a period of time i had a discipline of keeping you know certain thumb rule in my mind that okay you know i will not sell if i don't get 10% of returns on any stock i buy so that is something that I, I i kept myself and then i kept myself that thumb rule so that i kept to it but that's still too wrong as i said you know so there are many forms you know in the stocks obviously when i didn't have an experience how it works so buying a uh, buying a stock is taking from a savings account to the trading account and trading account to buying a stock and having a paper numbers basically 10 stocks five stocks on a different companies where you buy and then if i sell it to go back to my account to understand this process for me it took almost one year because i was so scared maybe i you know somebody else is eating up my money etc so but then when i started i started with 10000 rupees 20000 rupees uh, 1000 rupees to anywhere between where i could buy one two stocks to understand how it works and to understand how it works but not to buy what works better so there is a difference between so to reach that point it took me a lot of time of understanding reading and uh, you know how the trend is so it's it's a long process you know it didn't get there so, but then advisors how advisors fail me in a sense like i mean i don't say that they fail me it's again you know they give you advices it's your emotions how you keep your emotions on that particular time whether to buy it or sell it or just because of some false news comes uh, you don't need to get excited just because it's it's a news it's a false news you don't know what actually happened unless until someone who works for the company tells you this is true pretty much you need to you know can take calls again you know it's probably the person who is giving you the news is probably is not right as well so basically many things happens in stocks too much of speculations you know it's going to go up it's going to just because you know certain company about a, uh, a simple example i can give you is an ashok ashok Leyland, you know i got us some stocks but then see they got a one uh, sometime in between i think um, uh, when i have it just i don't follow that one anymore but then uh, they said, you know, they got an order of 3,000 3, units, some uh, units from a different company. The stock went zoom, you know, pretty much raised up to 20, 30%. Now, nothing happened, just the news, you know. They didn't, uh, you know, get the orders yet, you know, they didn't, in, you know, the manufacture it yet, they didn't get the money yet, but then just went up 20%. So that's how the speculation works. Uh, which is very wrong you know you need to understand it takes a very long time to understand how it works now getting back to uh, taking uh, wrong advices again you know one of my friend who is who is friend now but you know we at the time when he met me he has suggested me he helped me you know, picking up a nice insurance policies but you know investing he was basically zero so he's an insurance guy but then eventually he also probably learned the trade so he told me so there's a good news that there is a the you know the stock called l forge you can google it and you can see it l forge uh you know buy and dips that was time it was like an eight rupees to ten rupees buy and dips because it's going to go very high i mean whatever he said i believed it and i was started accumulating accumulating i had about till today about five thousand stocks of l forge now you see the value it's pretty much you know i can have that five thousand for another 10 years or 20 years uh, but the value is not going to go up. So these are the false messages can uh, trick you. And uh, if you don't have an understanding, first of all, and if you don't have a proper education on how it works, and if you don't have emotions to uh, act on those uh, pretty much controlled emotions to act on those messages, then you know you, you are in a wrong place because the emotions can, with the emotions, if you take a decision, it can drag you to you know 
to all time your lows either it is a personal or professional if you don't control your emotions if you have anger anger issues you can lose many things in your life personally or professionally uh, at the same time there here you need to is the good thing is that emotions you know you need to control your emotions in a stock market you know you do this as a part time try to understand don't get into a full time just because everyone is telling you okay it's giving you wonderful returns and x y just because now uh, bsc is trading at 40000 this is not the right time to invest you know there are opportunities you do get where to invest and when to invest and that you will come to know uh, over a period of time you know you don't you're not going to you know learn the trade in one day so uh, pass forward so i tried options so, so this example i wanted to give you options you know i had opened up another account with a uh, different um, uh, trading platform and at that time he said sir options is also a very good option uh, i didn't understand jack shit about what is options by the way but then he asked me to sign it i signed it and then he showed me in less than a month you know some certain uh, 10000 profit in a day I was so excited. I said, okay, you know what, you know, it's it's really good, man. You know, Options is doing very well. And um, pass forward in one year time, he lost one lakh out of the same thing in Options. And he didn't have even decent things to say so that we lost the trade. So uh, when I was just looking at my balance sheets and I figured out, you know, what happened to that one, he said, no, sir, I was just, uh, you know, I was just speculating probably, you know, it would have got, but it didn't work out. So pretty much I lost one lakh and just less than a, you know year stand just on those trading and option so options trading is just and again as i said an options currencies and intraday is a too much of excitement which goes on a day to day uh, you follow the news you know they will tell you today you know we got this offer we got that offer and that one is you know showing the results quarter results are coming and the stock is shooting up if you fall into those ones basically you better don't get into the stocks because with the stock market is only for the long term in my opinion and if you if you want to really burn your hands you can try your options you can try your currencies you can try intraday and many options which can give you and moreover if you are excited you want to try you can try an x forex x forex is even much exciting you know you can see in front of you how one lakh can burn you and then you can see in front of you how you can make two three four lakhs and that's more exciting if you really want to try but my suggestion is you know the cash stick to the cash uh, segment of uh, stocks uh, and then leave it for a long term um, so that that can give you a good returns then you know getting into all these things which you're not experienced enough and again you know i'm saying that you know there are professionals who can do it but then how you need to trust the professional is completely depends upon you uh, it seemed like you know professional doctor for certain specialties we go uh, you, you don't mind paying a little bit more but then we go to that particular person so because you're sure that person is going to do a justice for that particular disease at that particular operation which is going to happen so you know there are i'm not saying that everyone is you know trying to bully you but at the same time you need to understand whom you need to trust and then that can come only over a period of time not instantly and not falling into the small things and if someone tells you that you know uh, your one lakh become 10 lakhs in one year pretty much you just give away that and if you believe that you better give that one lakh to him in the first place and then just wait because this is what is going to happen you're going to get zero and nothing else you're going to get but then you know uh, a society or trends and all it tells us that you know there is an eventual progress is there for each and every stocks you pick up but then you stay in a long enough but then someone say okay you know what i don't have that appetite to wait for uh, you know 10 years 20 years 30 years in a specific stock because i need money to think but there are very many other than a secondary so we are talking about only the secondary income other than whatever job you're in your business you're in so to generate how much you can do in a secondary part of income so that i'll come back to you when i connect to the real estate so again stocks is a long term i invested but then luckily uh, i did have a lot of lessons from the brokers and um, the advices which i received but then i learned my lessons and what works out better but then at the cost of sometimes with the money and at the same time but uh, touch wood and thank god that you know i never lost money but then i always you know sold uh, pretty much whenever 10% uh, is up but then there are many stocks which is doing pretty much 100% if you would have stick to those pretty much stocks if I would have believed in a long term if I would have stuck to it some stocks would have given me minimum 100% on 
which are the socks i mean if you really want to know i can share those numbers but then again you know it's it's again the past data is just the record and then future is again is a guess and based on whatever the company is doing now you can take a little bit of bets on how maybe you can diversify your things and you can see how self you can do it now the gold gold is a many one says that you know in terms of your portfolio you should have minimum uh, 15 to 20 percent of your investment in gold and why because you know as i just said last time you know when i was born the gold one gram was 93 rupees and when we speak today is 3800 it's never yes there is a fluctuation same like a stock uh, you know, it goes, uh, maybe it stayed pretty much, on, you know, 3,000 for a long, long time. Now we see that momentum is picking up uh, to 3,800. But, you know, it's, 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 you know, at any point of time, if you want to invest, it's, it looks very high. But then the what makes you succeed is that when you take that, uh, any time is a good time to invest. So even if you have a chance to buy one gram, you can buy it today and then you can look at it and, you know, 10 years down the line, 20 years down, how much that would cost. And then I invested pretty much 3 lakhs and the gold between 2007 and then I have a good returns of 15 to 16 percent. But then thing you see, these are all, you cannot, you know, the, the best thing with the stocks is that anytime you want, you can sell it because it's, it's just a matter of, you know, you know, doing it on your fingertips. Gold, pretty much uh, you can take to the you know if you want to get a loan from banks for emergencies that would be an ideal thing also for to keep it for emergencies but don't mix up anything you know go extremes in any of those areas so you need to diversify so even something goes down something will give you their average returns end of the day if you think back so which gave me about a 15 percent of uh, you know and that many times i used that for emergencies whenever i needed money for you know things that whenever you know i was not working you know if i wanted to use for some emergencies yes of course you need to pay the interest but then that would help you uh, instead of borrowing with someone basically you're you know uh, taking a little pride and uh, you know at least you know paying interest but then you still have the money for your emergencies if you want it good but then the final thing and the most important thing is the real estate now ask yourself whichever the position you are in whichever the stage you are in and which are the city you are in if you want to buy a uh, two bedroom apartment or three bedroom apartment a single bedroom apartment what is the cost what is the lowest cost and what is the extreme cost so that you know wherever you want to fit in so ask yourself now do you have that entire money liquid in your cash that you could go and buy like you can buy a mobile phone that is not the case because it's all a big ticket items that you know sometimes you know it takes time for us to you know convince ourselves for a period of time to buy you know to have a roof for yourself your family i didn't want to uh, you know um, stay in the rented apartments of all my life you know I, I need to have my own address and my own address to me and my family members so that's the motivation which gave me that i need to have a house so you will never have uh, you know all lump sum amount of the time when i purchased was close to 35 lakhs was an apartment close to 5 lakhs for all these uh, xyz um, expenses which you come across so pretty much 35 to 40 lakhs is what i invested back in 2009 but then of course i had to take a loan but then taking a loan uh, you know you need to put a down payment nobody is going to trust you to give you everything and this is how the trend works and then that's how it is now all these this 10 lakhs helped me to get the down payment but what if i didn't have i mean it's not that i but pretty much had 2007 and I purchased 2009, but I still had that money where I could use it as a down payment or, you know, to do my interiors or, you know, just to move in, uh, even though I was paying, uh, you know, the, uh, the EMIs, which is a different story. So, but then when I was connecting back, you know, you wanted to, uh, you know, regular cash flow. And what you can do is, you know, if you, if you come out of that one house for yourself, and uh, then for your family so you're set for your life basically and then if you come out of that if you manage to get out of that uh, emi thing you can go for a second house you can go for a third house uh, where you can rental and it's not an easy th thing you know i know that people are growing and the rental opportunities are there but also you know ask yourself uh, investing 40 50 lakhs in a real estate and waiting for 20 15 to 20 thousand rupees of rent every month 
is it justifying you i mean if you have a liquid cash you go buy and then that's a different story eventually the real estate over a 10 period 20 period of 20 years period of time it goes up in terms of valuations but at the same time you know if if, if you have to take a loan and uh, you know rent an apartment and i think you're just fooling yourself basically you're paying more uh, thing unless until you think that you know first one is clear second one as an investment purpose i wanted to do it also while simultaneously doing a rental it's a different scene altogether but at the end of the day real estate has given over a period of time a very good returns whichever the city you're in like for example you look at a bombay don't go too far to the 40 years just last 10 years from where to where it reached and then it's now gone and then government is keep increasing the uh, you know the standard uh, rates of that particular valuation that you need to pay for the registration so you know that's your benchmark basically but then you need to pay not in other countries but then in pretty much you know the actual cost is different than the actual government valuation fortunately fortunately and that is it that's how it is but it's a very good investment so and touch wood so though there are many mistakes i made and i learned over a period of time but then the my biggest investments or i would say the strongest bets I took was in a real estate the first time i invested in a piece of land in 2004 which is pretty much i paid 4 lakhs including the registration when i talk about today it's close to 15 lakhs to 20 lakhs is a value but then people say one way that you can hold is also because it cannot it cannot be done easily you know you cannot sell real estate just because today you think that you need a money and then tomorrow you're just going to go and sell it off it's not going to happen the transition takes anyway the fastest could be 30 days to 90 days you know it depends on what are the valuations you're selling you're finding the right uh, person and uh, getting the paperwork done and everything takes takes time and the transition of the money etc etc maybe maybe because there are many times that i wanted to sell that particular thing but uh, you know i didn't have an options uh, i didn't have a proper bias to buy it that immediately so i find a ways to uh, you know uh, stop my emergencies to work out for my emergencies and uh, so they stayed so staying long enough again you know coming back to the same thing was gave me returns if it have sold that uh, five years ago ten years ago probably i would have got a little bit of margins but then definitely not the way i can see today now back in 2009 uh, is what my second investment on the house as i said 35 lakhs to 40 lakhs is what i invested taking the loan uh, all these bits and pieces helped me to put my down payment and then taking a loan and then you know paying the loan off or whatever it is uh, but then if I, if I you know pass forward 10 years if i look at it uh, it, it pretty much in that particular area costs about anywhere between 80 lakhs to one crore but many people say okay sell it and show it to me now i don't need to prove anyone uh, but then definitely my investment is secure you know the 40 lakhs what i invested is guaranteed i have this still with me so if i manage to uh, you know close my loans i have 40 lakhs savings in my account i would say in terms of a house now uh, you know after i don't need to prove anyone that you know it goes to the 80 lakhs uh, one crore you know even if you really need a thing can take a loan you can take the loans in a mortgage as well uh, which can help you to invest in a different places but then think about this in 2009 till 2019 in a 12 months and an average of 15000 of a rental so i stayed in my house uh, so you know you, you, there are many positive things that you can take you know so you know I, I would rather you know this entire thing i would have paid the rental but then again you know it is appreciated and still have a house you know moving forward probably it will go up and then it's just i'm not really you know worried about whether it goes up or down because most important thing is i have my house i have my house for my family uh, so that you know that i have a roof to stay and if i'm you know secure enough probably then i will think of investing in a different um, things based on how it works and how it goes on so this is pretty much an uh, investment how uh, you know i had in this shared and then how it can help you to understand where you can see yourself taking the calls but whom to trust definitely by now you should be able to know only one person you need to trust is yourself and your abilities to take the risks uh, don't uh, take the people opinions it's good to understand their opinions but then don't take their opinions as a final thing and uh, one example i wanted to give you is that you know it's better to take 
uh, advices from your father or your you know you know someone who can uh, gives you this uh, suggestion again i'm saying that you know uh, what education and what um, your father or your parents might be having is based on their age and their trends but then now the trends are moving it up you can take the opinions but then again you should be your best judge based on the trends what you are in and uh, you know sometimes uh, you know taking your your time to decide and taking your time to take a decision is most important than taking the decisions in a quick uh, when your emotions are at all time high emotions can drag you down if you take the decisions with the emotions so you need to think cool-headedly you need to see what best you can do and then most importantly and try to learn and learn and learn and then if somewhere you want to invest try to get into nooks and crooks of it but then you know knowing is one thing and doing is a different thing so knowing is to understand you the skill sets you know what works better what cannot work better but then unless until you put it in a practice start with a small bets i said you know start with thousand rupees so you have a confidence to increase coming back to that uh, confidence level i said you know when i started you know i used to i never did a trade more than 20000 rupees but to reach 20000 it pretty much i spent about 2 years you know but i always buy for 1000 rupees 2000 rupees you can buy as as less as than 100 rupees a stock just to understand how it works you know you don't need to worry about you know how the probably there are penny stocks which can go about 10 rupees to 12 rupees also so you can buy 10 stocks and see how it works and uh, and then eventually build a confidence and I reached to a, you know, like a couple of six down the line, six to seven years. You know, I was very comfortable to take a calls, even to buy a trade about one lakh to two lakhs. I mean, two lakhs being the highest one time I did a trade. But then again, I, I kept it only for the, you know, cash, nothing, you know, after burning in options, currencies and intraday. Uh, I just kept simplified to just to do it either in a cash or if, if some funds are doing good and a mutual funds and that's it. So, you know, you and then I knew what did I learn all these things is that, you know, only thing I learned is that keep yourself at least 10 to 20 percent of your investments separately. Start with your, you know, simplified accounts where you can keep yourself like an emergency fund and slowly, slowly you start investing the 10% either in a mutual funds or stocks or uh, real estate is a big bucket so that it takes time for you to get that lump sum amount to for your down payments etc but then you know never ever commit yourself suppose if your salary is 10,000 rupees i'm just giving an odd scenarios your commitment should not go more than 5,000 rupees so 50,000 is still a lot it's it's 50,000 is sorry 5,000 is still a you know a very good risk that you're taking um, particularly referring to the real estate suppose if you're buying an apartment don't overcommit yourself 40 to 30 to 50000 a monthly emi you need to pay as a lot from your pocket unless until you can manage even if particular job is gone or whatever the reasons for 3 to 4 months if you can sustain that is the capacity that you need to build up and then understand your risks and uh, you know what kind of families uh, upkeep and maintenance you might having is something that you need to understand before you take any big investments so but then all these small things can help you to uh, grow in a bigger way but if you don't have a discipline of investing i think we'll move on so with that note i would like to leave you today so again whom to trust yourself why and how I think those explanations would help you. But education, educating, educating yourself only is the best way for you to, um, you know, hit all these things. And where to invest, and these are the opportunities where you can invest based on your, um, uh, based on your risk appetite, what you can do. Most important thing is, it's not about what you make, it's what you keep. Is simple thing that I want you to take out of this video. Stay blessed, stay tuned, and look out for some more videos and financial education. Thank you. Be good, do good, and influence the people around you. And if you like this video, do comment your thoughts and share with your friends and families, whereas someone who might this education help them to grow in terms of financial. Thanks once again. Stay tuned. Stay blessed.